Teddy Feinberg, Brooke Stockberger, Teddy and Brooke show, we're back at it. Brooke, your shirt matches the tree in the background, kind of an outdoor fiesta. Yeah, thing. yeah, it felt good today. I feel like Ranger Rick. Ranger Rick. I like that name. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do a little Q&A session here. The questions were developed by our producer, Lucas Pierman. So be on your toes, and if you want to answer some of these through your TV screen, feel free, or you can yell at us whatever you want, or your computer monitor, of course. I don't think this is being broadcasted yet. Uh, first question, which team is more likely to lose a high school football game? Will it be Cruces High? Will it be Mayfield? These two teams meet the first weekend of November in what's typically a big game. Both teams are 4-0 on the season. Brooke, what do you think? Well, I mean, if I have to answer the question, I'll say Mayfield. They've played closer games. Cruces has just been blowing people out. So if I have to pick one, I'll say Mayfield. But I really don't see anybody beating Mayfield at this point. I mean, who is it? Volcano, Volcano Vista or El Dorado? Uh, decent teams, but are they really going to beat Mayfield? And then nobody else before Cruces is going to do it. It's not going to be Gatson and Yachty or Alan McGordo. This might be shocking, but I completely agree with your analysis. Uh, I don't think either team will lose. I think they will be undefeated, but I completely agree with Brooke. Cruces High has just been sensational. Mayfield's been very good. They've been making some opportune plays. They have a very good team. But Cruces High has just been on another level, and uh, the defending state champs could be right there. Again, they're clearly a top-four team. Mayfield's right there, too. I think they'll both be undefeated. But if I had to pick one, it would be the Trojans. Question number two, what can we expect from San Diego State this weekend? Now, we do know for a fact they are coached by Rocky Long, who is the former UNM coach, and he is a fine football coach. Yeah, he sure is, and he has, what, an 8-3 record, I think, against the Aggies' lifetime. And, um, you know, they're struggling this year. They're 0-3, obviously. They played a tough start to their schedule, too, although they did lose to, like, Eastern Illinois, but a good Eastern Illinois team. Yeah. Um, I will say this, they have a good kicker. He's one of only three kickers to have seven field goals so far this season. Um, seven for seven, I think, is the stat. So, and they get across the forty-yard line. They're going to be putting three points on the board. They like to pass. They have two different quarterbacks who will play. Um, so contrasting kicker games because the Aggies have only attempted one field goal this year, um, which is an astounding stat through four games. I think what you'll see is obviously San Diego State. Rocky Long is a great defensive coach. He has a very aggressive scheme. They play three down linemen. They're going to really try to apply pressure. I think he said last week they blitzed on 80% of their plays, which is an incredible number. Um, but there's, that's also a feast or famine defense, so the Aggies might be able to get them through the air a little bit. Very good defensive team, very good scheme there. Offensively, power eye football team, old school. They have a fullback. you got to love a fullback. Oh, yeah, you got to love that they have a fullback. Um, that's so, something that's been going away in the NFL. You know, they're, uh, and they're, their offensive coordinator is the wily Bob Toledo. The guy's been in the business for a while. Yeah, you're right. so, Former UCLA coach. Um, so we'll see, but you know, again, they're they're big favorites. The Aggies have to play really well to win that game, but I, I do think if the Aggies do play really well and San Diego State continues to struggle, the Aggies can get this one. So we'll see. Although the Aztecs did have a, um, a really close game against Oregon State last week, so they maybe have a little bit of that momentum coming. They up. might be on the cusp of victory here, but we'll see where it goes. Um, it should be fun. Um, question number three, which newcomer um, for Aggie Hoops do you think is going to make the biggest impact? Full disclosure, I am lifting from Jason Groves' comment. <laughs> yeah, please. Go ahead. Uh, well, D.K. Eldridge, I believe the young man's name is. He came from, uh, I believe, the junior college in Hobbs, College of the Southwest. He is a real athlete. They have a new point guard by the name of Landry. And, of course, who knows what they're going to do with Tanvir Bular, the you know, seven foot plus center. Oh, they might play him and of course Sims' brother, but that's going to be a very good basketball team. And they do have some newcomers. According to Groves, Eldridge yeah. is going to make a big impact. Yeah, a very athletic guy, can dunk the ball really well. He um, is coming into a team that has um, a really, really great ch chance of winning the WAC. The WAC is, you know, watered down. The Aggies are, you know, they have their experience with winning and. Um, I think get out and watch the Aggies this year. In they could run the whack table. And I think so. Eldridge is joining a very good defensive team already, so his athleticism might fit in very well. Read Groves' column, go to his blog, it's all explained there. <laughs> and we lifted from it, so I hope he enjoys that. And then question number four, we're going to go Major League Baseball here. Pirates fan, Tigers fan. What team is going to go the farthest? What makes me think we're going to have a difference of opinion? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm assuming you're going to pick Pittsburgh. Maybe Pittsburgh over Detroit in the World Series. That would be... we got to move desks if that's the case. <laughs> we, we sit right by each other. I'll say this right now. I couldn't be happier the Pirates are back in the playoffs. I really hope they can get into a little bit of a series here because they're probably going to be in the one-game playoff. Love to see the Pittsburgh fans get a home game. The Tigers, I think, can win the whole World Series. Obviously, the Tigers have been a great team for the yeah. last few years. And... 
God, I, I, I really actually tell you the truth, they're my pick to win the World Series. But they're my favorite team. I mean, well, who else would I pick? <laughs> this is the first time they've had three straight um, division titles or three straight postseason appearances, something like that, since like 1900-something, I, I just heard. So they, Jimmy Leland, a great manager. You know, they were a terrible team for years. But then again, you get the good, you get the good owner, Mike Illich, decide to invest in the team. Great, great general manager, Dave Dabrowski, Jim Leland. That's what pro sports comes down to. And then, of course, the Pirates, Pedro Alvarez, Andrew McCutcheon, nice young nucleus. Looking no forward to it. We've probably gone over our time here. But, of course, thanks for joining us, as always, at Teddy Feinberg on Twitter, at Brooke Stockberger on Twitter, our Sun News Sports Facebook page, lcsun-news.com, all day, every day for the latest and greatest. See ya.